That's music from the brand new album from the Jerry Garcia band. It's called Cats Under the Stars, and that particular tune is called Ruben and Charisse. And we have the very distinct pleasure of having members of the Jerry Garcia band with us here on CMF this afternoon. In fact, we have Jerry Garcia, Donna Gacho, and John Kahn in our studios. And you sure have picked a nice day to come to Rochester. We haven't had a day like this in a long, long time. All right. You should have seen what it was like here about a month and a half ago. Oh, we did. Now it's all starting to melt. You did, oh yeah. Uh, almost dead. The Grateful Dead yeah. was here right in the midst of it. That's true. We were here, we were That's here true. just before that in December. That wasn't too long ago. That no. was a big sellout. I remember I was uh, driving around about 3 in the morning after that show, and there were still people all over the streets in downtown Rochester. You wouldn't believe it. And you're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester keeps calling us That's back. That's us. <laughs> come back, Jerry yeah, Garcia yeah. band. Come back, come back. <laughs> well, people seem to like you. Uh, That's the important thing. Tell us who's not with us this afternoon that's in the band. Uh, Keith uh, Gacho, who plays piano, and uh, Fuzz Buchanan, who plays drums, and Maria Moldar, who's uh, singing with us as well. How did Maria get involved in the tour? Uh, well, uh, luck. I suppose. <laughs> Actually, there what, has to be what, what happened was that, that uh, uh, back when I did an album about uh, three or four years ago, and John produced it, and uh, he had Maria come in to do some uh, vocal work on the record, and uh, since then we've worked sort of informally, and uh, John and Maria live together. If that's okay, if you don't mind my imagining that. That's quite all right. <laughs> We're a liberal radio station. That's and okay. uh, so in this album, oh, she true. participated a lot, too, in the vocals and stuff. And, and uh, she's also accompanied us on a few other tours. And it's neat to have her singing with us. And Donna and Maria sing really well together. And they like working together. Uh huh. So just chemically, it works out really nicely. We don't we, fight or anything. And I love having <laughs> those pretty girls on stage, uh -huh. you know. Yes. <laughs> We're really excited this afternoon. For one thing, we have a, a super advanced pressing of your of your latest album. I don't even think you've heard it yet, right? And we got it not more than 50 minutes ago. We heard a test pressing just before we left uh, California, which was a couple of days ago, four days ago, three or something, some few numbers we of days ago, which we were very happy with. So we've okayed the production of the record. And, and uh, as far as I know now, it's in its... Uh, uh, radio stations will be getting their promotional copies and stuff, and it'll, mm -hmm. it'll come out in record stores pretty soon, I think. Jerry, let's talk a bit about the music on the new album. I've only yes. had a chance to listen to it one time. What kind of musical directions are you trying to take on this record, things like that? There's uh, a, a touch of reggae in it again. Every direction. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, we don't really have a style that's, uh, except that it's all us. It's, yeah, it sounds... Like us is the direction. Yeah, that's it's it. It's trying to sound the most like us of anything we've done so far. Uh -huh. Right, right. Uh huh. Well, maybe we should listen to something from it. Sure. We have Rain up next year. Yeah, the Rain it was written by Donna. It's her tune, and the arrangement that you hear is uh, uh, John Kahn's arrangement. He did the orchestration on it, so that tell you something about who's participating in this uh, music. We're speaking with Jerry Garcia, Donna, John Kahn right here on CMF. The new album is called Cast Under the Stars, and this is a song from it, entitled Rain.
Our studios were WCMF in Rochester at 96.5 FM, and we have with us right now various members of the Jerry Garcia Band, Donna Gacho, Jerry himself, and John Kahn. Here in our studios, we've just heard a track from the new album called Cats Under the Stars, and that was something called Rain, a Donna Gacho song with Maria Moldauer singing. No, I was Donna singing. Just I'm that. sorry. Was it? Yes. My, boy, I feel bad right now. No, that's okay. <laughs> it sounded a lot like her. Maybe I should have put my headphones on all the way. <laughs> Anyway, we were discussing different things when we were sitting in here while the commercials were being played. And one of the things that I've noticed about different bands around the dead and all the different solo careers and such, it seems that many different bands that have been around for quite a long time don't seem to keep the younger kids, okay? The uh -huh, band gets sure. older and the audience stays with them, but it seems with the dead, just talking to kids in town, that they're still into it. And it amazes me, like 16-year-old kids, when you guys started, it wasn't, you know, these they weren't even listening to the radio, probably. Right. What do you attribute uh, such things to? Well, we've been sort of lucky in having a, sort of a, a very spotty record career, uh, insofar as we've never had any real big hits or uh, you know, Singles, quadruple anyway. platinum records or any of that stuff. Yeah. We've got a handful of gold records here and there. But uh, we've been... Our audience, I think, is not there to hear us perform our albums. They're there to hear us uh, do whatever we do, and it, 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 typically at a show, there are people who request, you know, a few like old favorites or whatever, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, we never get, you know, gales of booing if we don't do do that stuff. We've always felt very free to do whatever we want to do, because it seems that, as though the audience is encouraging us in that direction, you know. So it, it works out well for us because the audience is dynamic. And they're uh, they're they they're accepting of anything that we want to try, and I think that really a, a concert for me a performance is uh, I like to go to a performance and be moved, and I don't think that you can be moved successfully a lot of times by certain formula devices that you can employ. For example, if you have a slam bang show that's really tightly organized and and uh, things happen just the way they're supposed to be, be tremendously exciting the first time, say you know. And, uh, lasers go off and explosions on stage and all kinds of special <laughs> well, stuff. Well, for some happens. groups that are into theatrics, sure, perhaps and, that works well. And that's well. neat, you know, that's neat, but the second time you see the show, and or the third time you see the show, and you realize that you're seeing the same thing in the same time, in the same pace, and so forth, and the same approach, generally, I think that that ultimately gets to be dull, and that an, that an audience doesn't really want to spend money to go back to that Right, much less follow that band all over the country. Yeah. So right. when you take the stage as a group, do you have any songs in mind, or <laughs> no. do you go, hey, let's do uh, right? That's it. We don't know what we're going to do. A new uh, experience. Very so. Go that's that's right. Low, right? Be, and that's because fundamentally we just have a very low boredom index. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it would be it would be it would be horribly boring for us to have to do the same stuff all the time, the same way. You know, each show. Well, we that's couldn't it. do it. We couldn't do it. Really, we're just constitutionally incapable of doing it. Really? That's where, that's where all the fun comes from. <laughs> yeah, it seems to work pretty well because there are definitely nights that are just total clunkers, you know, and the audience realizes, well, they made a brave try, but, you know, no score, you know. <laughs> and th But then there'll be other times that w that'll be magical and uh, miraculous. And from our point of view, we're able to observe mm -hmm. these things that are uh, uh, in the form of uh, an exceptionally high concentration of coincidence based on when you're improvising, you know, you're not really communicating in the sense of, now I'm going to do this, you know, John, hey, listen, John, I'm going to play this leg right. now, you know, it's not happening like that. Things are happening all at once. All of a sudden, we'll find ourselves in this place where uh, musical coincidences are, are occurring way higher than the law of probabilities would allow them to normally. So it, bore, it begins to be like magic, almost, you know, as an experience. So when we get off the stage, then it's like, what happened? You know, what, what was that? You know, we don't know. Everybody al already knew what everybody else was going to do. Yeah, and and I think that the audience is there is an that people come to that because of there is some something genuine about it. I don't know what it is. I you know, and I don't want to know really. You know, I like the idea mm -hmm. that it's a mysterious thing, and that it's. Uh, uh, something that people require, I, th I think. And the fact that we have the audiences that we do have indicates to us that, yeah, we're being encouraged in this kind of, this approach to music, you know. So you're playing off uh, each other, is, has that... In the that moment, and the audiences, of course, are participating, you know, I mean, they're involved oh, sure. as well, right. you know, they're, they're right they're, there with yeah, us. They're, yeah, they're, we're reacting to them, they're reacting to us, mm -hmm. it's all, 
uh, a whole harmonic situation. What's it like on those nights when you realize that all of a sudden there's some sort of great rapport between the audience? Oh, it's real special. I does, mean, it, does it, it come across to everybody in the group? Can uh, you just feel when it does sort of come across to everybody in the group, it's one of those things. It makes it makes it possible for you to do forty bad gigs, you know, that are just terrible, in the hopes of having that one that's special. The special one is so special, you know, that it keeps well. It's it's kept us doing this thing pursuing these ideas all these years, you know. Without trying to uh, box you into a corner here. Oh, uh, go ahead. A few favorite, like, moments like that. You concerts the over corner, the years, yeah. as far back as you want to go, you know. Like, <clears throat> any that you've had? I don't, uh, it's not, for me, it's not a linear thing. In other words, I can't, uh, you, you're not in a position, when you're playing sh live shows, you're not in a position to compare yourself to your former self. In other words, Say we had a great show last year, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then the last show that we did was just a clunker. Well, the feeling is everything that we've ever done added up to this clunker, and there's really just no point in even living, you know. It's just all, but, you know, it's yeah, all added up to a clunker. At the same you know? time, we don't know as well as a, a lot of times we don't really know very much about whether we were good or that's not. True. Some, that's true. And that's the God's truth. I, I've per, ha, played gigs where I was mad. You know, I left it mad, and then later heard like a tape, of, and it sounded great. Right. Or the opposite. Right. There, there it's 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 hard for us to know what we're we get too crazy to really know whether it's good. Yeah, or there, not. Are, there are levels of uncertainty. They're very, they're very hard to account for. That thing that John just described is a very real thing. I mean, this, there are times when you just feel like. Uh, God, I, I never, I couldn't quite get together all night. You know, I felt like my guitar was a little out of tune, it didn't sound right, and everything was funny. I thought the grooves were weird, and things were funny. And then you hear a tape, and it just sounds wonderful. You know, the audience response is incredible. You know, for some reason, you can't figure out what the heck is it, what is it that's making that happen. So for us, that provides a, a certain kind of proof, in a way, empirically, that there is a certain level of something that happens that we're not really responsible for. You know, we're not out there with our wills, you know, saying, you know, do this, you know, do that. You know, this music is now going to have this kind of emotional effect on the audience. You know, a lot of times it's completely out of our hands in a, in a very interesting way. You know, and, and, and being in this uh, situation where we're exposed to a high energy environment all the time and this uh, testing situation, you know, we, it's happened often enough for us to know that there is something special about it, even though we don't know what it is, or why, or anything else about it, really, and mechanically. We're just aware of it because of our own ability to, to test it. You know? Well, a Jerry Garcia band concert is an event to people, too, to everybody in the audience. You know, They haven't seen those other shows you know, where it might be, eh, eh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, no, an awful lot of them have, though. That's, That's true. That's true. Your uh, groups, uh, people follow you all around the country, I know. <laughs> yeah, and there are people who come, and they really, they really do. They uh, pay close attention, and they're following, what they are following is a dynamic process progress, you know what I mean, rather than a show. I mean, they're not coming to see the same show, they know that it's not going to be the same, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things that keeps them interested, just as, as it keeps us mm -hmm. interested. The same sort of uh, thing applies. Mm, the, and they're willing to listen to some songs that aren't real great. <laughs> and come back again. <laughs> yeah. We have a song up next here that, that you co-wrote, John. I believe is I wrote the mu the uh, music part and Let me ask Hunter you, wrote the words before we melody get into the part. song. How do you work with Robert Hunter? Now Robert Hunter is your lyricist. How do you get yeah. together with him? How do you fit the music that you write to the words that Robert Hunter puts to the music? I mean, do you come together in a room or no? Uh, yeah, we do, we do it all different ways. Rehearsal a lot of different time. ways. Sometimes the Garcia will have like pages of words and write music to that or sometimes we'll write music that doesn't have words and give that to him so it goes different directions yeah so there's no specific style of working together. right there's all kinds of fine-tuning uh, possibilities sometimes I have I'll have an idea which includes vocal phrasing for example right and I'll uh, sing the phrasing to Hunter and he'll uh, he'll, you know, then work, develop a whole series of ideas based on the phrasing, and I'll go through and edit, you know, and it just we work very freely together you in all, all different ways. For instance, edit uh, eight typewritten pages of Terrapin Station words into what eventually got on Terrapin Station. Right. 
do you all still work together and live together as a close-knit family, or is it sort of fragmented a bit? Well, there's too we many of us together, to really yeah. live together. That's yeah. not really possible. As econo Also, economically, I mean, in California, they don't really let you do that anymore. Uh -huh. You know, they have laws about how many people you can have that aren't related living under the same roof. And how many can you? They do? Yeah, they do. Oh. They did that back when people oh. were, lots of people were living <laughs> in one house. Oh, they actually oh. dealt with that. I never knew that. Yeah, they That's actually did that. I thought everybody took it upon themselves that it was too crazy or something. And basically, we all have our own <laughs> scenes and families and so forth and uh, whatever, you know. So it's, uh, we're all, we all are, uh, live near each other and we hang out an awful lot together. And I would say that if you had to divide our hours up, that, that we, in terms of life hours, that we probably live together yeah. in terms of spending more hours together than we do live anywhere mm -hmm. else. You know. For instance, we can be playing at um, a place called Keystone in Berkeley, and having been working on a record or whatnot for days and days and days, and I walk in and Jerry and I just immediately crack up. <laughs> you know? And he says, long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It gets to be pretty silly at times. <laughs> at the end of the album, I remember we saw the sun come up four times through that little slit right. in the ceiling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Without ever leaving the room. Yeah, you know, the room that we were working in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <coughs> we, and, you know, I mean, we, we've chosen to work that way just, you know, I don't know why. Just, uh, mainly because we, we can't really do it very well. We just well. did. <laughs> you know, you have, one of, uh, <coughs> have one of these uh, studio setups of your own now, like, where you can go and just lock yourself in a room and, and work for days straight if you want right. to. Right, this record right. is the first record from months. that studio. <laughs> you know, months in this case. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> this record is the first thing from that uh, studio, which is uh, uh, was partly funded, partly built from uh, the uh, uh, budget that I was allowed to make this record. And uh, it's quite well equipped. It has uh, um, a really nice Neve council from... Uh, England and a Studer 16-track uh, Swiss machine, and and really, and it's an excellent sounding room. It's a very large room, and it really sounds very pretty. You know, it has a very pretty vocal sound, very pretty instrumental sound. And this is the first record uh, made in there. So, and we're really delighted with the results. We're real happy. To get back to the song here, this is a song that was co-written by John Kahn. John, why don't you give it a a brief introduction, and then we'll <coughs> play the song. Well. It's <laughs> like a reggae song, sort of. It's influenced by reggae music, which I happen to love a whole lot. That that t reggae music was uh, the most significant thing that happened in terms of bass players for me in uh, ten years, maybe. Do you think we've really seen reggae music bloom yet, as far as how it's used in the rock context, or do you think you there's might even hear more it now? Uh, Here's a good example of. Okay. I don't know, but I, the way I don't, we do it, at least. I don't know that there's going to be a lot. We might have heard the best reggae records so already. Yeah, it's. it's I don't. I don't know that there's going to continue a lot in Jamaica. Yeah, to tell I don't. You the truth, yeah, yeah, I don't think there's going to be some kind of reggae explosion. I think that it's really like it's a local kind of music from a very small part of the world, and it has a very. It has, I really think, a limited appeal. But from a musician standpoint, it has some really interesting things that that like American music could use. Right now, yeah. like what? Uh, a, a rhythmic feeling, uh, a whole approach to rhythm that has to do with like standing on the rhythm in a certain way. And the, and my, my, the easiest way I can relate to it is to figure it about 93 degrees with about 100 percent humidity. You know, in the middle of summer, just going real slow. You know, and it has this a steadiness to it that comes from that that kind of island life, like the surf. You know. And uh, all those things, and it, and then uh, and the thing about the bass playing, like John was saying, the the sense of the rhythmic, the the holes, the space is having rhythmic value, in the same sense that in a positive negative image sense, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So the holes have the same kind of rhythmic value that the no, that the notes do, which gives it a tremendous power, and uh, a really kind of lo a, lo a real lovely rhythmic thing, you know. And, that, uh, you know, and, and as a bass player. Uh, a, a long time ago, a, a lot of, especially like rhythm and blues records, like I'm thinking of like old Motown records and stuff like that, the bass line was really one of the more important elements of the song. It was like a counterpoint to the vocal. And those were the most basic elements of that music, and the drums too. Uh, music has gotten away from that now.
music gotten away from music that's designed to also listen to and also dance at the same time too? No, there's the, no disco music is for listening and dancing, but I'm talking about music that is is uh, directly related to the bass line. It's something that sort of died out in America, and uh, it's it's an element of reggae music. Needless to say, as a bass player, it appeals a lot to me. All right, let's listen to it. The new album, Cats Under the Stars, the Jerry Garcia Band. This is Love in the Afternoon. And we're back in our studios here. Oh, we? Oh, my God. And we did not hear a song called Love in the Afternoon. Actually, we heard something called Palm Sunday yes, featuring Dave did. Bergen on harp. Dave Bergen. Does a very nice job. And uh, we're just keeping you on your toes here at CMF. That's a, does it sound like reggae contest? And there's no winners or losers, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, by the way, was a Garcia Hunter composition, and now we're going to go back into the tune that we were talking about, Love in the Afternoon, a Con Hunter composition, and here it is this time. <laughs>
That is called Love in the Afternoon, and that is from the brand new album by the Jerry Garcia Band. Jerry, what do you think about stuff like uh, Elvis Costello's watching it at Texas, merging reggae and rock? Uh, I like it. Yeah? Yeah, I like it. I like Elvis Costello. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I haven't heard of it. Some of that stuff I really like a lot, uh, the so-called <laughs> new wave music. Yeah, yeah, what do you like? Uh, what I like, well, I, li I really like that, that uh, band Cheap Trick. Mm -hmm. I like they're them great. a lot. They're great. Yeah, I think they're really great. And, and I just what I, what I like about it uh, is uh, the spirit, you know. And, yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, the, the guy, the, the guys are putting hard. out. You know, they're putting out and trying hard. Like uh, the whole American heavy duty production trip, the L.A. trip, the slickness. You know, the, the you know the glib slickness of all the it's all gone. Produce. Well, it's it, it's gotten to be so mechanical and so predictable and so safe. You know. From a musical standpoint, well, let's put let's put some strings here. Uh, and, yeah, uh, you know, it's very it's a formula trip. It's almost a formula trip. So this this other music is real raw and real nasty, and the and the players are not very good. But the spirit there, the you know, the spirit there is something I think that uh, uh, young people can always dig. That you know, it 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 you know, it's, well, uh, it seems yeah. like when you you know, that, I dig it. You know, I mean, I I'm not deep young anymore, really. I remember Me listening either. to the FM radio, which I yeah. don't get a chance to do much because my car radio is broken. <laughs> and uh, I was in somebody else's car. And most of the stuff I hear, I, I can't get real deep into anymore. It seems like it's, m m pop music has taken kind of a fall as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, me too. And I heard this punk rock song. I don't know who it was by. And... It, it, it got me off more than anything I heard on the radio all that whole day. I was listening to the radio. It was just like blue, like some kind of blues and surfing music uh, <laughs> thing with the gu guitar blues licks that weren't right. You know, like not quite the right chords and stuff. And I, was, I loved it. It was like they were trying to make music. Well, new wave yeah, music is working really well out on the West Coast. It's very popular, isn't it? No, no? not really. I mean, uh, here's the the problem. I, I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you the thing. The reason why is because uh, the promoters ha have the unfortunate experience of promoting the shows and uh, losing money like crazy, and then the, and the audiences are usually such a drag, uh, unfortunately, and that's mostly because of the hype, the the press part of it. You know, uh, that their behavior makes it so it's like a one-time only shot. You know what I mean? Uh, in other words, you know, the uh, for example, like Bill Graham would put on the Sex Pistols, uh, although they're disbanded now, and would put on one show. But after that one show, he just he just said, "Never again. I'm just not going to do it again. I'm not going to expose uh, my own people, the people that work for him." Yeah, I saw Bill Graham. I think it was on the Tomorrow Show, and he was with a member of the Jam, and he was saying, "You know, I really respect your music, but as a promoter, I don't know if this is going to work too well." Well, yeah, the there are some, some problems. Up. Too, yeah. It was sure set up by the press it? before yeah. anybody ever even heard it. Yeah, I think that I was read about that about stuff it. before I ever heard yeah, it. Yeah, that was what's, what was unfortunate. People go there expecting to get crazed. And there's and, that, uh, you know. Uh, well, maybe that's one of the problems with pop music. Well, now. the image is more important. Well, the pop, the, the, the pop the music, music journalism. You know, pop music journalism, like er, like everybody who is writing for the the various the respective magazines, you know, the uh, Crawdaddy and Cream and Rolling Stone and so forth, they're all anxious to to be the first to recognize the new, you know, phenomena. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that and I and I can dig that. You know, it's like uh, a news an, a journalist wanting a scoop. You know, so this uh, small element of activity in the English working class, you know, uh, what became magnified way beyond its own real power, uh, you know, to deliver. It seems like perhaps it started in England, it was really raw and rough, and now yeah. a lot of the a lot of the more talented people, say, in this country and in Britain, have taken sort of the values within the new wave music and redefined it. That's and right. It's coming yeah. out into stuff like Elvis Costello, sure. which it sounds like sort of good R&B, yeah. but if you listen and to the words, I it's think what, I think, a lot I think different. They're going to be involved in a matter of progression as well. In other words, a player is going to, those players, the guitar player, the singer, and so forth, they're going to listen to their record, you know, and say, that, well, the next record... I think I w I'd like to play a little bit better on the next record. You know? <laughs> Hopefully, you know I mean? really, yeah. It's uh, one of those things that's hard to avoid. I mean, when you're a performer, you really your instincts, uh, regardless of what your act is, your instincts are to try to be uh, a little bit better, unless there's something really funny about you, you know. And, uh, and I think that the music is g will have that thing of developing into something else, maybe, you know. Well, and 
something interesting about like European music to me is like, it, it basically derives from American music of some sort or another. But originally the blues, I think of like the Rolling Stones, and <laughs> but uh, sometimes they come up with stuff that I really love that, 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 that you'd never think of here. Even though it's derived from American music to me. You did a, a big Grateful Dead show a year or so ago with The Who. Now, they're, yeah. they go going back 10 years. Now they're the original punk, you know. Yeah. A lot they, of, they do yeah, great, yeah, too. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of respect for them, and I admire what they do. However, uh, uh, I spoke to, uh, to uh, uh, set, maybe. Uh, Pete Townsend before uh, their set, and he was telling me that uh, they've been playing the same show for four years. You know, I mean the same show. Yeah. That's a little bit of a burn to Yeah, it is. It's a burn for them, and they were sort of depressed about it. I mean, to have to have to have to do exactly the same numbers in exactly the same order for four years in a row is, I really think, you know, I mean, it's not exactly a sign of progress. And I think it's it unfortunate because the, the guys themselves are capable of more than that. You know, they're capable of better things. They're good. They can play good. Sure. It, it, I can see that it ain't even fun. I don't think they dig it. I don't know why. I people probably want to hear that said. But I, it, it wouldn't be fun for me, and they're musicians. I can hear that. Oh, yeah. I wonder, I'm curious about them. Uh, they are musicians, though. They're good. One thing we have to get you guys all to a, a end oh, on it, right. to a sound check pretty yes, soon here. Yes, unfortunately. But one thing before we uh, before we wrap things up here that I want to touch on is you all seem to have to vent your your musical uh, ideas through solo projects outside of, say, the Grateful Dead. And you have for years and years and years. That must be a very important part well, of Well, it's music. an illusion, really. I mean, the illusion is or that they're solo projects when they're really not solo projects. Like, what we do in this band is no solo project. It's something that's really a, a group contribution. And believe me, it's not It's not uh, a matter of my own personal activity, you know. it's I'm involved with people who have the same, who care about music the same way that I do. We have an affinity for each other. We enjoy working together. And it, and for me, a group dynamic is way more interesting than the, the concept of a solo project, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've done one solo project, my first solo record, in which I was foolish enough to try to play everything on it myself, and I was really bored with it, fundamentally, because uh, uh, you oh, like you already it. know everything that happened, you know what I mean? There's no surprises. You know, the thing of working with other people means that somebody's going to uh, shed a new kind of light on an idea of yours. It's going to... It gives you something to work with, you know. If there's electricity there, chemistry, you know, things is like that. Is it true, Jerry, that like the banjo was your first instrument? Yeah, it was my first serious instrument. And then yeah. you went to the guitar, and then the electric guitars. It was because it was more of an extension of. Uh, I th well, for me, the banjo got to be so. Uh, Swiss watch, like right, like a Swiss watch. It was like a cuckoo clock or a Swiss watch. It, it got to be tremendously mechanical, and uh, and I I. I had I just had a tremendous reaction to it. Finally, it was like I really can't make music with this instrument. I want something that that moves the way a voice moves. You know, I want to be able to play more expressively. I want to be able to have a whole other kind of you know or uh, you know it's just I find I just burned myself out on the banjo. Really, mm -hmm. is what it boils down to. It's kind of a one toned. Yeah, it's got anyway. it's got one sort of idea going for it. You ever think of going back and doing another album, say like the old and in the way record? Uh, for me, it was the music. You know, John and I John both was on were that in that too, band, right. right? And for me, yeah. the, uh, the neat thing, uh, in my whole in, uh, my whole interest in the banjo, even was really not so much the banjo itself, but bluegrass music as a as a style of music. Mm -hmm. And it's the music that I cared about rather than the banjo by itself. So it's very hard for me to say sit at home and practice the banjo. If the music were there, in other words, if I were going out and playing with friends, you know, a couple of nights a week. I could get into it, but really the music matters to me more than the banjo does. Yeah, really. It's a beautiful kind of music. It is. It's really but neat yeah, music. I couldn't see practicing that either. No. <laughs> no, I, no. Jerry doesn't think he plays the banjo or the steel guitar. Or <laughs> oh, we're all crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> he's, he's talking about his first record. My four-year-old listens to it three or four times a day. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that, too. Mm. <laughs> Lots of, luck. lots of different aspects to your music, for sure. Thanks. I remember going in when, and watching you. you play bass on that. It was funny. <laughs> oh, geez, that was it. embarrassing. <laughs> no, I, I oh, God. We should probably wrap things up here, because you do have to go do a sound check. Okay. But you're going to be on stage tonight, starting around 7.30, in the Auditorium Theater, the Jerry Garcia Band, featuring...
Donna Gacho, Jerry Garcia, John Kahn, Buzz Buchanan, Maria, Keith, Keith. you'll all be there. Singing with Maria tonight. is great, too, for me. I haven't gotten to sing with yeah, we girls should, in a long should, time. We should stress that point, that Maria is part of the band. Yes. Yes. Okay. 7.30 tonight at the Auditorium Theater. Thank you so much for stopping really? down here and talking to us here on CMF this afternoon. Thanks for, Thanks for tolerating us. We've got one more song really? here. We've got one more song. Yeah, this, Jerry, is about, this is one uh, that you co-wrote, so yeah, we'll let you let, introduce this. Let me tell you about it. And let me tell you about it. This is, this is about, uh, 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 I don't know, this is an Old Testament song. And, and everybody knows about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, this song is about Gomorrah. Everybody knows about Sodom. Nobody knows much about Gomorrah. <laughs> this song is about Gomorrah. <laughs> Wonder how 